Good evening, sir. Good morning, sir.
Conley, will you respond? Hello, sir. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, it's, shall we get started? <clears throat> Sorry for delays, but yeah. <clears throat> so, what are the topics we have completed till now? So, we saw the mathematical physics part and the vectors, which are the basics for this. Okay. So and, my, and vectors is what we have seen, right? Yes. Yeah. So is there any question from those two chapters? As of no, no. Right. So the week following this, that is the next Saturday. Can we have a test in there? It will not be a one and a half hour test, maybe one hour test. Okay. okay. So we'll have a test in that chapter. Um, now I'm going to get into the textbook concepts. That is, I'm going to go in the order. You know that the first chapter is deleted, right? Physical world is not a part of your syllabus. So we'll be starting with the next important chapter that is a units and measure. Right. So in today's class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see this more of a theoretical chapter, right? So I'll be discussing. Uh, a part of this chapter and today I'll be doing some activities also for you to understand how actually physics works. So in the last, so time is 9.53, right? Maybe somewhere around uh, 10.40 or something, I'll start doing some experiments, okay, which are with the help of the things that are available in your home, you can do with them, right? So shall we get started? Yes, sir. So the name of the chapter is units and measurements right so let's try to first understand what this actually means if i put this chapter in front of you and say what is your understanding of it what will you tell me? sorry measuring distance is it always about measuring distance measure a, measure a physical quantity you have any physical quantity for any physical quantity you're going to take a measurement Right. See, suppose I give you a task. Let's say I'm going, I'm asking you to go to a shop. Let's say you have a house party. Okay. You have 10 people at home. Okay. And I'm asking you to get some soft drinks for the party. What will you do? You'll go to the shop. Okay. You'll go to the fridge. You'll open it. How many soft drinks are you going to pick? So you will calculate something, right? You will take a measurement. See, suppose it's a two liter bottle. If somebody is going to consume only half a liter of it, right? You will calculate and buy the bottles according, right? So if it's a two liter bottle, let's say uh, four of them can consume out of it. You're going to get two and a half bottles. Two and a half is not possible. You'll get three as a buffer. So you do some measurement in your mind, right? If it is a one liter bottle, you're going to get five. If it is half liter bottle, you're going to get 10. So it keeps changing. So based on the requirement that I'm giving, not only me, see, but based on the requirement in everyday life, we keep taking measurements. Okay, let's not constrain our mind only to physics. Let's try to understand everything in terms of generic value. So when I take a measurement, there is some value that is associated with. It. What do you mean by value? For example, in this case, I told you, if you buy a two liter bottle, you're going to get three bottles. If you're going to buy one liter, you're going to get five, 10, Sorry, half a liter, you're going to get 10 bottles. All these are not measurements. So what is the quantity that is getting added to the measurement that you calculated in your mind? It is that number. So there are two things associated here. The number of bottles you're supposed to get, which is going to be, what were the numbers I told you? It can either be three, five, or 10, depending on the quantity. So these are just quantities. So what will you say? I got three bottles of two liter. I got five bottles of uh, one liter, 10 bottles of half a liter, something like this. But there is another important tag associated with it. So three 
Coke bottles, let's say it's for, if it is a two liter thing. So you didn't say two and left it. So you attached a tag to it. What is it? Liter, right? So you took a measurement and to that measurement, you attach something like this. That is why this is called as the quantitative value, which is the measurement. And the tag that you attached is what is called as unit. That is what we are going to do throughout this chapter. So we'll try to understand for whatever measurement you're going to take, how are we going to associate units to it? But mostly what will happen is, see, the example I used is a real-time example, which we do in our day-to-day -day life. Right? But when it comes to this chapter, since it's a part of your physics, right? What we will do is we'll try to learn more in terms of the perspective of physics. We'll see more of technical terms associated in this particular chapter. That is what we are going to see, right? So that's the overall outline. So I'll just read out. So we observe many phenomena. What is phenomena basically? What is a phenomena? Phenomena is something that you can observe, right? So we observe many phenomena occurring in our surroundings. So some of them are going to be natural and some of them are man-made, right? See, for example, Let's say there is a wind blowing at a particular place. It's going to be a natural phenomenon. It's a natural convection that is happening, right? So for that phenomenon, what will happen if I give you a task of asking you to calculate the speed of the wind, right? You are actually calculating or taking a measurement for an activity which is naturally happening. If I say man-made, let's say somebody has constructed a building and I'm asking you to count the number of floors that the building has. That is something man-made for which you're observing something. So it's all about observation. Something that is happening around us, you are going to observe, you are going to give a value to it and a unit to it. That's it. This is what we do without our knowledge every day. Okay. So to describe any phenomena, what is important? See, when you observe a phenomena, what, what would have happened till your 10th grade is you would have observed many such phenomena. Like uh, you talk about atmospheric refraction. You would have observed that phenomena. Like you say, this is the reason why it is happening. But... If I go into a more advanced science, it is not only about the observation. There will be situations where you need to calculate certain things. Maybe to predict something or just to understand what is the science behind it. It could be any reason behind it. But you need to, what are you supposed to do? You need to take some measurement. That's what we are saying. So to describe any phenomena, measurement of different physical quantities associated with art are essential. It is important for us to calculate and take the measurement of those physical quantities, right? So this is an example. Let us consider a fruit falling from a tea, tree. To understand this, what are you going to do? See, let's forget about this. Okay, let's forget what is given there. If suppose you are observing this kind of an activity, what are you going to do? Let's say there is a tree falling from a particular, sorry, there is a fruit falling from a particular tree. What are all the observations you are going to do with respect to this activity? What will you do? First thing is, you need to know what is the height of the tree. Second thing is, maybe you will try to calculate what is the speed with which it is falling. Third is, you will try to calculate what is the acceleration it is experiencing. And the fourth one is, how much time is it taking for it to travel from one point to another? Right? How many physical quantities did you calculate here? One is, you calculated the height of the tree, which is associated with the length. So, if suppose you do this measurement, how are you going to report the answer? You will report the answer like X, for example, I don't know what is the height of the tree. Let's say H, you will either call it as feet or you will call it as meter or you will call it as centimeter or millimeter. You will give a different tag to it, right? So it depends on your convenience, whichever unit you are convenient to use, you are going to use. Secondly, when you calculate the speed, what is the tag you are going to associate with? Tag means unit. Let's say it is falling with a certain speed, let's say Y speed. So for Y, Y is the quantitative value, it's a number. To that number, what will be the unit you will give? Depending on what unit you have given for the length. For example, if you measured the length in terms of feet, you will call it as feet per second. If you measured it in meter, you will call it as meter per second or centimeter per second or millimeter per second. Then what will you do for the acceleration part? Second square. Something by second square. So second is common. You are not going to... Or see, sometimes what will happen is you want to take the second or you can take it in terms of minute or you can take it in terms of hour. Mostly when it falls from a smaller height, you will not take it in terms of hour because you will not have that much time to measure. Right? Maybe you will take it in seconds or at the max you will take it in minutes. Am I clear with this? 
So depending on that, we need to start thinking. Why I am telling this example is don't restrict your mind only to meter per second. That is where most of the people make mistakes. They don't observe the question properly. When it comes to problems, right, you will make so many mistakes. So that's why I'm stressing on this point. Keep your mind open to whatever unit it is going to come. If they specifically say that it is going to be SI unit, what is SI unit? I'll discuss. They specifically say what is SI unit, then think of meter per second or meter per second for something. Else. Okay. So this is what we are going to see. Suppose you take, to understand this natural phenomena, we should know from which height does the fruit fall. So how much time it takes and what is the speed with which maybe it is falling and what is the acceleration. To answer all these questions, we need to measure the physical quantities like distance, time and mass. Why we need mass is because, if, suppose I ask you what is the weight of the fruit, what will you say? What do you mean by weight? Something you have learnt in your ninth grade. So basically, it, basically, yeah, basically, it is the force with which the planet is trying to pull the object towards itself. Mass multiplied with acceleration due to gravity. Right? So if suppose you know the mass of it, you will be able to calculate the weight of it. Right? You will be able to calculate. We say accurately, but there will be some errors. About errors, we will learn. So whatever measurement you do in this world, right, it will not be accurate. That is the first point you need to have in your mind. Same is applicable even when you do it in your lab. So you have your practical sessions. right? You will be asked to write a lab manual. Then you will be doing the experiments. Right? Most of the time you see, there will be a difference in the reading of yours and your friend. There will be a slight difference at least. It will not be accurate at all unless you copy it exactly without doing it. Okay. Why that happens is because humanly errors are possible depending on how we perceive or how we observe that experiment. But we should ensure that the error is not much. If you don't get error at all, then there is something wrong. That is the meaning. You cannot be accurate. So here, why I am stressing this is, they told accurate, you know, accurately you can't measure something. Okay. So, for measurement of any physical quantity, we require to decide their appropriate units. This is what I was stressing upon feet per second, meter per second, centimeter per second, all these things. So, in this chapter, what we will do is we will study how the physical quantities are measured in the first place. We'll try to understand how those measurements are taken and how different units are defined. If you have clarity of these two, you can master this chapter. See, this chapter is, don't, don't see it from exam perspective because though this is the first chapter of your 11th grade, you're going to apply the same throughout your physics. See, suppose you take engineering or something also, there also wherever you're going to learn physics part, you're going to use, make use of this chapter. So, always think from that perspective, right? And I told you, no, there'll be errors. Nothing is accurate. There will be different types of errors. So what we'll be mainly concentrating is first try to understand how the physical quantities are measured. Second is how to give the units, how to define the appropriate units for those measurements that we have taken. And the third is after you do the measurement, there will be some errors. How are we going to calculate the errors and how are we going to report? This is what is the third part of the question, right? Now, having said this, the first question that we need to answer is, what should be the unit of a physical quantity? So I told you, you need to define the unit, but before you define something, you need to know certain rules, right? What, how, how, what, if you say something as this is unit, then what is that unit supposed to have? Is what the question is. So what should be the unit of a physical quantity? The simplest definition to it is the standard measure of any quantity. So if you take, what do you mean by standard is, See, suppose you are writing an answer. You're not doing the experiment for yourself. You do the experiment, let's say, to report it to someone else. See, somebody else would have been reviewing your paper. They'll try to understand. They, they'll ask your help, measure this value and tell me. Means You're helping them out. When you're helping them, you need to follow a standardization. What do I mean by that? If suppose velocity takes a unit of meter per second, you should write meter per second only. Only then the other person will understand that you're speaking about velocity. You cannot say the velocity of the object is going to be pi meter per second square. What will happen to the person who is reading your paper? They will first thing get confused. Are you able to understand what I am saying? So that is why there is some standardization that is important. That is why we call it as the standard measure of any quantity is called the unit of that physical quantity. Whatever physical quantity you are going to define. Right? The first thing is the measure of a unit should be definite. And it should not be ambiguous. It should not be confusing. Everybody who is reading should be able to understand what you are saying. Second is, the unit should be such that 
its measure should not change and a, if a unit is defined with the help of some phenomena then that phenomenon must be permanent what is the meaning of it is you are doing a particular experiment in a particular way you need to get that answer only in that way that is what we are trying to say and the third thing is the prototype you know what is the prototype you have heard of what is the prototype no see for example this watch is there no this watch is a real time thing it's a so this is design, designed by some company what they do is if i have to manufacture this watch in a real time basis there will be a certain cost associated let's say my selling price is somewhere around 5000 rupees so logically think no, what will a business person they will at least have 20% margin or 30% margin and they are going 5000 rupees means are they going to take manufacturing cost as 5000 no let's say they are doing it at 3000 rupees okay they want to do it for different colors what is happening is if they start manufacturing real time thing for 3000 rupees let's say they are designing 10 watches and how much is the cost coming to 3000 into 10 30000 rupees what if there is a defect in it will they be able to use it in the sense they thought of some color but they didn't get that color as the output so it is going to be a waste it is going to go to the dustbin so why do, why would someone waste 30000 rupees to something going to a dustbin so what they will do is they will design a replica of this in the sense they will design a non functioning model where they take 3D printing of it. So based on that, they will assume this is how the output is going. So that rep duplicate model that they design, no, that is what is called as a prototype. So generally for anything in this world, even to design this water bottle, even to design the stapler, for everything, even before they go into the real time and invest more money into it, they will always design a prototype. So next time onwards, have this in your mind. So that prototype, right? A replica of a unit should be easily reproducible and easily available. So, meaning of it is you need to decide those quantities which will be easily used in anywhere else. So, when I explain about the different types of units, you will be able to understand. I hope I'm clear, right? You understood what is what should a unit possess. So, it is basically this thing: the standard measure of any physical quantity is called as the unit of that physical. Okay, these definitions and all you will have in your textbook, so I'm not giving it. Right. The next question is, what do we mean by the units of physical quantities and what are the systems of units being followed? This is the next question we are supposed to answer. Right. So when it comes to the number of physical quantities right in this world, there are many. Can you define some physical quantities which you people know, which you have already learnt in your physics? Sorry? Meter, speed. I am not able to hear. Wait, okay. Can, tell me, you know, tell me the, give me a list. So you can talk, let's go with simple thing distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, all the, this you would have learned in the order. Then based on that, you would have learned force, weight, torque. Torque, you will hear it this year. Then you would have learned something called as momentum and all these things, right? Angular momentum and linear momentum, all these things are there. No? These are all the physical quantities. But if you see it, Though the names are different, right? If you try to consolidate and observe it, right? These physical quantities will have some relation with the basic physical quantities. That's what we are going to see. So, what they are saying is, although the number of physical quantities is very large, they're very large. You take a list, it is going to keep on going. Tomorrow you can invent something, right? We, though they are going to be large, what we do is we need only a minimum limited number of physical quantities for which units should be the units of all other physical quantities. Meaning, if I take force, right, what is force? You would have learned something like this. Mathematically, force is mass into acceleration. Okay. So, if I have to define the unit of force, what are the units I need to know? I need to know the unit of mass. I need to know the unit of acceleration. So if I know the unit of both, I'll multiply the units of both to get the force. Am I right? That is what they're saying in the first point. 
So though force is a new physical quantity apart from mass and acceleration, you can always represent this in terms of known quantities. So you would have learned this, you no know, force is equal to phi Newton. But what is that Newton actually? You try to observe this, you no, know, it is kilogram, sorry, kilogram, I'm talking about SI unit. This kilogram meter per second square. So basically kilogram meter, kilogram into meter per second square is given another name called as Newton. So every time instead of you writing kilogram meter per second square, you can just write it as Newton, it's simple. Right, that's what they're saying. Although the number of physical quantities is very large, what we do, we need only minimum limited number of physical quantities for which units should be, comma, the units of all other physical quantities that can be expressed, defined with the help of them. That can be expressed and defined with the help of them. Are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? Is this point clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Good. Right. So I'm saying there are minimum quantities that are enough for us to define the physical, for us to define the units of other quantities. No. What are those minimum quantities called as? That's what the first question is. The minimum physical quantities are known as the fundamental quantities and their units are called as fundamental base units. This is the place from where you need to start writing. Okay, start making notes for it. I would suggest copy the first point. Copy the first point. that we don't know. We have to see. There is a table for it. So whichever smaller quantity is helping to build a bigger quantity is called as a fundamental. Am I clear? So the minimum physical quantities are known as the fundamental quantities and their units are called as fundamental or base units, both are same. Okay. Next concept is, what about the other physical quantities? They can always be expressed as a combination of, as a combination of fundamental quantities. Okay, that is the first point. Secondly, you express certain physical, see for example, force is expressed as mass into acceleration, right? Acceleration is basically not a fundamental quantity. Um, if suppose had it been expressed as a combination of two fundamental quantities, then it is called as a derived physical quantity. It's called as a derived physical quantity and their units are called derived units. So basically when you ca classify units into two sectors, right? Depending on whether they are the base or whether they are derived, they are classified into two types. What are they? 
fundamental or base quantities. The second is derived quantities. So what are the units corresponding to it? Fundamental or base units or derived units. So this is the biggest classification, right? So I hope you understood two terms, fundamental quantities, fundamental units, derived quantities and derived units. So write down this point. So don't write it like this, such physical quantities, such physical quantities, which can be expressed as combination of fundamental quantities are called derived quantities. Are you able to understand? Physical quantities, which can be expressed as a combination of fundamental quantities are called derived quantities and their units are called derived units. So the next question that we need to ask is, okay, we understand what are fundamental units and what are derived units theoretically. Okay. If that is the case, what are the different systems of units that we can? So what do I mean by system of units? So for example, if you are in India, you go and ask for a quantity which is related to mass in terms of kilogram or grams. Suppose you are in the US, we express it in terms of something else. Right. So maybe. You would have seen these best taken, right? They will not, they will not actually reveal the mass in terms of kilogram, they'll reveal it in terms of pounds. So depending on the place and you know the time. So time with different uh, time periods. So depending on case, first of all, there are different units, there are different systems of units that are observed. One is called as FPS system. Always, whenever you give a name to a system, right, you give it in terms of mass, length, and time. Yeah. So F P S F stands for foot, which is related to length. Pound is related to mass, not weight. It is related to mass. And its second is related to time. So these are the three quantities based on which we will be defining the system of that particular unit. Meaning, in a system, everything will be measured in terms of foot, pound, and sink. Right. There is another unit, another system of units called as. So what does C is stand for? It's very simple. First is always length, second is mass, third is time. So C stands for centimeters, D stands for graph, and N stands for second. Then you have MKS M here, this measured in meter, K is K is for kilogram, and this is for second. Then you have something called as MKSA system, which is mass, sorry, which is meter, kilogram, second, and ampere. Ampere is a measure of Right. And the last one is SA unit, which has seven base. That is why here the name is not given as MKSA something. We didn't mention it. Here we have mentioned four base units. Here we have mentioned three base units. Three, three. Whereas in SA system, you have seven. So let's see what those seven are. This is what the table is. So we are going to use the system. Right? What is meant by SA system of units, which is called as system internationally, right? 
So the seven fundamental there are seven quantities which are accepted as fundamental quantities under SA system of units. And these fundamental quantities, their units and symbols and their definition are given to you. First thing is the base quantity is length. For length in SA system, you measure it in terms of meter, which is written. The symbol used for it is foreign. Similarly, for mass, you measure it in kilogram, it's measured in terms of the symbol is kg for time. It is second, you write S. Right. For electric current, it is measured in terms of ampere and you write A. And see these four, four we have already seen. In MKS system, also you have these four. What are the three additional things that are getting added are the thermodynamic temperature, which is measured in terms of Kelvin, or it is capital K. Right. The amount of substance which is measured in terms of mole, and the simple use for it is MOL. And the last one is luminous intensity. So, what do you mean by intensity is the brightness? So, when you talk about intensity, you can speak about intensity for two quantities, one in light and sound. So, when you talk about intensity of light, I call it as luminous intensity because something that eliminates luminous objects are something that eliminate light. Right. For example, if you take this room, right, this has a certain amount of intensity depending on the number of lights that are switched on. Maybe if I switch off the lights, the intensity will decrease. Intensity is basically brightness. When you talk about sound, what does intensity speak about? It speaks about the loudness, the extent to which I am able to project my voice is going to give the intensity of the sound. So here it is not the intensity of sound, it is the intensity of light, which is measured in terms of candela or CD. Are you understand what I am saying? Right. So this thermodynamic temperature Kelvin is there. No, I have a question. You measure your body temperature, right? You check whether you have fever or not. Right, you measure your body temperature to check whether you have fever or not. What is the unit used for it? Celsius. Sorry? Uh, degree Celsius. So meaning, let's say your body is having fever, it's 100, right? You mean to say your body is at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius? Am I right? Is my understanding right? 100 degrees Celsius, now you will burn. Uh, 40 itself, we are not able to withstand. It's not Celsius, no. it is Fahrenheit. Why I ask that question is you, here you have Kelvin also. It's Fahrenheit. And this Kelvin is the absolute measure of temperature which we'll use for the experimental purpose. Okay, so it's not Celsius, it is F. So when you observe, I'm not sure which thermometer you're going to use. Do you use a digital one or a mercury one? Digital, right? Okay, that's in terms of F only. You can see the measurement on it. There'll be a unit given on top of it. If you use the mercury one, right? One side will be Celsius, one side will be in terms of Fahrenheit. So you can always convert it. Now the conversions part, I'll teach you in the 11th chapter, how those conversions are done. But as of now, are these things clear? So what are the seven fundamental quantities? This is something that you need to remember. Length, mass, time, electric current. Okay, let's come from the beginning. Length. Mass, time, electric current, thermodynamic temperature, fifth one, sorry, sixth one, the amount of substance, which is in terms of mole, and the last one is luminous intensity. So what are the units used for it? Length is measured in meter, symbol used is small m, mass is measured in kilogram, symbol used is kg, time is measured in second, s. Electric current is measured in terms of ampere and A. What is there here? Thermodynamic temperature, which is measured in terms of Kelvin or K. What is there here? Amount of substance, which is measured in terms of mole, M-O-L-E, and the symbol uses M-O-L, right? You'll use it in gaseous state in your chemistry also. Luminous intensity, which is measured in terms of candela, and the symbol uses CD. And the symbol uses CD. Okay. So you have these quantities. So write down the heading as SI unit and the seven fundamental quantities. Make a note of these. So I'm not going to the definition as often it will confuse you so much.
Dan Those are online. Are you done? Copy. Okay. Yes. Yes. So the next question is we need to define the derived units. We need to define the derived units, right? So all the other units of different physical quantities can be expressed as a combination of these seven base fundamental quantities. We understood what are derived quantities already, right? But here, our job is even more simple. What is it? Now, we have clarity of what are fundamental quantities. What are the seven fundamental quantities? Based on them, yeah, you know their units also. Based on them, now it is easy for us to form the derived units. So next time, if I give you a question, you can easily tell me whether it is a fundamental or a derived quantity. Right? If something does not fall under the seven uh, physical quantities which were mentioned, they fall under derived quantity. So all the other units of different physical quantities that can be expressed as the combination of these seven base quantities are called as derived quantities, right? Of which system? Of the SI system. So example, what is the SI unit of acceleration? It is meter per second square. Meter is a measure of length. Second is a measure of time. So it is derived as a combination of length and time. So length is used once, time is used twice, right? So that's what you're going to get. So unit of displacement is equal to, sorry, it is equal to the unit of displacement divided by the unit of time square, which is meter per second square, or sometimes you write it like this also, meter second power minus two, right? So this is there in your mind, no? Do you want to copy this? So the next one is apart from fundamental and the derived unit, you have something else called as the supplementary units also. So what these supplementary units are, see there are some supplementary physical quantities which for which we'll never include these uh, units in the measurements. Okay, but we'll know what they are. One is for a plane angle and the second is for something called as a solid angle. So plane angle means, what is it? See, for example, if I ask you, what is the definition of an angle in the first place? What is your understanding? If I ask you the definition of angle, now you see you would have studied in your trigonometry, Euclid's geometry, theta is equal to 60 degrees. So what is the meaning of that 60 degrees? What are you actually trying to say? How is yes. an angle formed? Bent at or it is. Sorry? I think it's bent at 60 degrees or it's. So it is bent at 60 degrees, okay, with respect to water. Whenever you measure two quantities, right, you need a reference. One is distance and the second is angle. See, for example, if I ask you, what is the distance and leave the question, does it make sense? What, what should be the next point I should add? What is the distance between the two points? So there are two points which are taken as reference. We are able to understand. So you always need a reference. Similarly, angle is measured where? But 60 degree means what for? See, suppose I have a line like this and a line like this. I say this is 60 degree, we'll accept it. I take one line like this, I take another line like this. I say the angle between these two lines is 60. Will you accept? But it is 60 only. How will you get it? Because you can extend this in the backward direction. You can extend this in the backward direction. You'll still get 60. Means this line and this line are inclined with respect to each other at 60 degree. That is the meaning. What exactly does that 60 mean? Is what the question is. See, when you talk about an angle, right, it is always measured between two lines. So if I take this as one line, this as another line, right, I keep the bottom line fixed. If I take the upper line and rotate it like this, right, if I rotate it like this with respect to the bottom line, then I'm saying, I'm creating an angle of 60 degrees for the second line with respect to the first. 
So angle something angle is something that speaks about how much rotation has happened for one line with respect to another fixed line. There is a meaning. So when you measure the angle, right? Till now you would have learned that the angles are measured in terms of degree, but you would have also known that it is measured in terms of radian. That's what I understood because I heard that they taught you in your school. That you know how to how to convert ninety degree to pi by two. I think we discussed this, no? That a ninety degree is equal to pi by two radian. You know this, no? But somebody told me that they know this, so I thought it was taught in your school. Okay, that is not the case. It's fine. So one of the angles, so one of the units that is used for measurement of angle is degree. The other one is radian. So in the supplementary unit, what we have is this is what a plane angle means, right? So plane angle is measured in terms of radian, and the symbol used for it is RAD. Okay, let's see. For this alone, I'll tell you what the definition. The ratio of Length of arc to the radius of the circle is what is called as plane angle. I told you, you know, one line is rotated with respect to another. Suppose these two lines are considered to be the radius of a particular circle, then this line will rotate on the circumference. So it is able to form an arc length. So if I call this arc length as L, and if I call this radius as R, then the arc length divided by radius is what is called as Plane angle. Why we use radian instead of degrees? Because if you want to measure something in terms of degree, you need a protractor. So every time it is difficult. You will not have a protractor in hand. But for you to measure something in terms of radian, all you need is a small thread because it gives you the relation. Observe nowhere the angles are involved. It is basically what it is a ratio of a length and a length. That is why it is easy for you to measure angle in terms of radian. That is why we have another unit, which is called as the supplementary unit. Are you able to understand? And one more thing is, one degree is equal to pi by one eighty radian. One degree is pi by one eighty radian. You can have these two points in mind. Can you make a note of this? So you can write the definition also. Sir, I can't hear you. 
Yeah. So, uh, solid angle is basically defined as the ratio of the area that is taken as a part of a sphere. See, if you take a sphere, you take a part of the sphere and you measure the area of it from the from the corners of it, right? You join it to the center, right? Then if you take the measurement of this area and divide it with radius square, then you get an angle called as solid angle, which is measured in terms of steradian. And the symbol used for it is SR. This is not used at all. Like we don't use it in our syllabus. Mostly we'll use only plane angle, but it is necessary for you to know what are the two supplementary units. So make a note of this. Did you all write this also? Okay, write it. You're done writing? Right. So these are the first important basics with respect to this chapter. Okay. The next part that we are supposed to discuss is about how to take the measurements of different quantities. And after you take the measurement, how are the errors going to occur? Okay. That is the second part. And the third part is about dimensional analysis. So maximum in two more classes, I'll be able to complete it. See, as I told you, you know, there's more of a dry chapter. It's completely theoretical, right? I don't want to drag it much. So I'll just show you some activities which we can do to understand science, you know, to appreciate the physics behind that particular activity. Yeah. Those who are online are able to see, but you will have only side view. Yeah, though, yeah, are you able to see? Yes, okay. sir. Straight away, and then you can play Google. Google.
ओके So shall we start? We'll do two, three experiments. I told you, no, everything I'm going to do from the things that are available. At... Hmm. Okay. So how many of you play badminton? You all. All okay. player, Adam. So what great player are you? A class, B class. You da? You don't play. You play, okay. You, you don't play at all. But at least you watch. Okay. Now, see. Suppose I am asking you to go to a shop. Okay. Get a badminton racket and come. Then what will you do? Like, how will you choose the best one? Using physics. Okay. Come on. What am I? I'll show you. I'll give you a small task. Be careful with the fire. See, I'll show it to them also. No, I'm giving this to you. You need not hit anyone. Okay, you just balance the sense. In the sense, not like that. You you find a point where you are able to balance it so that it does not. I'll switch off the fan. No one with one finger. Or you can like hold it also. Hold it against the gravity. Hold it against the gravity. So you can hold. See now it is turning. No, like this. Hold it so that you don't apply pressure. Okay, you cannot apply pressure. Hold it in such a way that you find a point where it is able to get balanced. You are holding it tight. No, that's not the. I... Not sure. See, you should not hold it tight. You should not apply any pressure. Just hold it lightly. See, now it is rotating. It's rotating in this direction. If I hold it here, it is exactly rotating in opposite direction, right? There will be one particular point where it will not rotate at all. Now it is rotating in this direction. So I'll have a point somewhere over here. You're able to understand. So there is a point where I can balance it, right? So if you measure this point. Right. If you measure the distance, I told you, you know, distance is always taken with respect to a reference point. You may, if you measure the distance of this point, you can measure it from two sides. Where are they? One is from this point, or you can measure it from this point. But whenever you calculate this balance point, right, you should always measure it from the bottom. So when you measure this distance, and it it comes out to be somewhere between two eighty five to two ninety millimeter. How much is it? If it comes somewhere between two eighty-five to two ninety millimeter, that is twenty-eight point five to twenty-nine centimeter, then this bracket is said to be a balanced. And this one is said to be a balanced one. And when you talk about the balanced bracket, there are two types. One is called as a head-heavy bracket, and the second is called as a head-light bracket. So the name itself is suggesting this part is heavy, or this part is going to be light, right? So if this point is Shifted anywhere this side. If this point is, if the balance point is shifted anywhere greater than two eighty five millimeter or something, right? Then it will become a head heavy racket because this point, according to badminton, is called as the balance point. According to physics, it's called as the center of mass. Okay. So if the center of mass gets shifted to the heavier side, then it will become a head heavy racket. If it gets shifted this side, it becomes a head light racket. So headlight racket is something which will be easy for you to manure things, whereas head heavy will be something which is good for the smashes. Are you able to understand? So this is how physics can go. This is how physics can be used to choose a badminton racket. So what is the concept you are actually using? You are using the concept of center of mass. So center of mass is a physics concept, but for a badminton racket, it is called as the balance point. Are you able to understand this? So next time we'll be able to choose. So I want you guys to think and come how to choose a good cricket bat also. Study and. I know that uh, I saw. I saw. Sorry. What is he asking? I saw a video yesterday. I know how to choose. So Sorry. Hold it. Uh, hold it in the tip of your. 
which one the hold it no, 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 take it back you hold in the tip of the handle and okay you balance, okay balance it uh, with uh, your elbow not bent elbow straight yeah elbow should not bend but uh, is there yeah. a mass concept and everything you need to let me know no someone told sir, me it's that like pure it's strength not. only sir yeah strength only da but depends on how it works for you no yeah like what he is saying is like you I just pull the bat with straight i understood sir. i understood ah. that is what everybody does but as a science student i'm asking how will you calculate the measurement because i told you a number here right i didn't say that this is the balance point i gave you a number as a reference i told you measure that length and see if it should be somewhere around 285 to 290 right like that what are the numbers observe and come okay see this thing is there no any idea what it is tea bag no so inside tea powder is removed and uh, you have this so i'll keep it like this okay one minute huh? i'll show you so i'm keeping it like this right i'll take a math stick just burn it what will happen yeah that's right but why so think no observe what is happening there so as i told you no the objective is not to explain science here. i mean i mean not to bring interest in science i want you to understand what is the physics behind it. okay i want you to give the exact reason for it. so this is there ad parol sir no So it's getting burnt. It didn't fly up. Actually, it's a fail experiment. It should fly. Yeah, but you know, Nirithro. Actually, it should have flown up. You're right. I'm not sure if it got stuck there. I'm able to see some liquid. It got stuck. But okay, if it is flying, right? What is the science behind? Think about it. Get it, Kerala. Liquid, Kerala. Liquid, that old tear, baby. Now, actually, the plank on the roof, on the plank, right? Okay. Mom, mom, mother. Sir, I have a guess on why it burns. You have? I have a guess on why it flies up. What did he say? I have, I have a, guess. a guess on why it flies up. So, okay. hot air. You have a guess. Is, okay, okay. Hot air ah. is dense than cold air. Okay. So it moves, moves up faster, moves up and takes the place of cold air. Okay. So when you burn the tea bag. Mm hmm. the uh you're almost there your guess is right so when you burn the tea bag the air around it also becomes hot so what happened when you when you heat it the air around the tea bag also becomes hot which causes okay. it right? if it becomes hot what should happen Okay, let it become hot. Why are we worried about it? If that's the case, then what should happen to that air? And the other air, you know, bag or the tea bag one. Okay. So I, 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 I'll do another. And a candle. You're there, right? Just complete it. No, you are saying something. 
don't know how to take it further can someone else take it further can you try he's saying that when you heat it the air around it is going to get hot sir like the gas around it like uh, makes the paper like push forward or something like that okay like the carbon dioxide uh, will make the air uh, See here, I don't know what are the chemical reactions, so I I'm not even sure whether carbon dioxide is getting released. I'm sorry about that. Sir, it's paper, so on, uh, it will obviously... It will come up, but will, do you think that gas will be sufficient enough to push it up? Yes. But that's not the answer. Because the gas is not the one which is actually pushing it. There is some other science phenomenon. I can give you the hint. You have studied Archimedes principle. You're there. What is it? Paper bag on the arrow. Okay. So later can I marapoda? Okay. Okay, then, sir. The, the Combine air, everything and tell me. Sir. The air inside the tea bag will be less dense than the air outside the tea bag. Correct. Okay. It is less denser it flow. So, so you're right. You're almost there. Like you're speaking in terms of density. I'm happy about it. You're there. You're almost there. So I, I gave you the hint also. He told Archimedes principle is what do we speak about? We speak about buoyancy. You know, what does buoyancy speak about? What is the other name for buoyant force? Which starts with you. It's called upthrust. Because it always pushes the object upwards. Okay. You know this, right? You have not heard of upthrust? Okay. So when you take, see, for example, in your, uh, like when you go for a washroom also, like you have a bucket of water, you try to drop the mug, you try to press it inside, what will happen to the mug? It will come up, right? So who's pushing it? Water, right? So it is trying to push the object upwards. That is why it is given, it is having another name called as up thrust. Up is upwards, thrust is force. Are you able to understand? So let's see if this works. If this, you would have seen it many times. I've seen what happens? Are they in a small pen? That's what the answer is. How do you the LN device of the area in the Let's try and see. Okay. You want to try and see? So since you told me what to do, I'm assuming you know how to do it as well. So first, ah, okay. Okay, again, one minute, but you need to give some time to it. That's the case, it should have burnt. Is on the carbon or the correct? For all, see, mistakes happen. Did you observe what happened? What is the reason behind it? So, what is the actual science behind it? So, when you blow it, when you blew it off, right? What happened? When you blew it off, then you saw some smoke, right? What is that smoke actually? That smoke is actually vaporized wax. This wax is there, no? It is actually getting vaporized. Means it's getting converted to the vapor state and it starts flowing upwards. Why is it going upward? Because it started heating the air molecules surrounding it. Whenever the air molecules get heated up, their density decreases. So when the density decreases, obviously it will start raising in the upward direction. So when it was raising, you got the vaporized wax upwards. So you kept the burnt 
matchstick here also the heat was able to travel so this is another example for a phenomena called as convection like how the heat actually gets transferred from one point to another with the actual transfer of medium so the, the, this phenomena you learn which is called as convection so there are three types of ways in which heat can get transmitted one is conduction second is convection and the third is radiation so radiation means you know what is happening right we get the sun's rays all these are happening because of radiation so the thing that you saw here is because of convection so where do you see the example of conduction any guess yes when you touch two objects or when you talk about a solid right see when you cook something let's say it does not have the insulation then what will happen when the material is getting heated at the bottom you you place it at one point on the stove right whereas if the handle does not have insulation what will happen to it will you be able to touch it after some point you will not be able to why because the heat is actually getting transmitted through the process of conduction so conduction generally happens in solids convection generally happens in the case of fluids and radiation happens whenever there is no medium for it to propagate Are you able to understand so about all these phenomena you will learn ye parkodra ida ne go birthday for holy thing july 7th they advance the money they are able to see you they did you guys see i uh, yes sir yes this one you can try it at home and see it with a candle let's see what is happening this thing now it worked so why did this happen again the same logic what is it so the air particles started getting uh, sorry they started getting heated up due to which their density decreased and due to the decrease in density they started rising upwards so this is another example for the process of convection are you to understand yes so these are all the simple activities that you can do with the help of this fire and thing right okay hope thank you Okay, I'll do one last thing and show. Ask her. So you all can come front. You can you can stand here. You can come and stand here. I'll show you some. What is that? Zoom the login button. Sir, I'm. I'm going to film video. Don't do that. Na, you need clear at area. மைக் வந்து ஆன்ல வச்சு ஆஃப்ல வச்சு இந்த இந்த லிங்க் தான் இந்த கிளாஸ் உடைய லிங்க் ஹேய் யூ गाइस கேன் கம் திஸ் சைடு mic off there hmm so listen can you tell me what is conservation of linear momentum so what do you mean by something is conserved so something is conserved means preserved right so when i talk about conservation of linear momentum i say that the initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum provided the external force acting on it is going to be zero right now i have this kind of a system i have a ramp which is bent in the form of a curve and there are some marbles right what do you think will happen if i drop each one at a time santosh can you try and see come here it's a very simple activity you guys can come closer so you just take one marble right and drop one drop it don't give any speed to it just drop it before you drop i want you to guess what will happen so how many so this side how many marbles are going to go up one is it so let's try and see yes worked right 
similarly i suggest you to drop two so hold it here hold it at the bottom just drop two marbles what is going to happen what is your guess i guess two will move two will start moving upwards okay, okay. did it happen right now if you take three then it is going to be obviously then it is going to be three okay okay now take four but you have seven marbles you don't have equal number so take four marbles and leave what do you think will happen middle marble oh, that's it. middle one will go the other side let's see So what happened? It didn't happen like the previous scenario, right? Then what exactly happened? Can you tell me? So what happened? In this case, wait, sorry. Thank you. when you release three no so what was happening three went up and then it came down so whereas when you release four what happened so they were all traveling together now if i release it like this then what do you think will happen so i release one from here and the other from here what do you think will happen i think they should come and stop here why is it happening Exactly. So then, a Newton's third law. Right. The forces are actually getting transmitted from one point to another. Right. Is that what is happening? So this is trying to apply a force here. This is trying to apply a force here, and they are getting balanced as a result of which the linear momentum is getting conserved. So if I take two, what will happen? Sorry, I released it before itself. Did you observe? So take three. Right. It was, this was trying to oscillate between because of the amount of so from where you release no that also takes an important role. So that is the reason. So I hope you could understand right. So this is another example for conservation of linear momentum. Can you tell me where all is this applicable? Where what are the other places where we apply the conservation of linear momentum? You have learned in your ninth grade, right? Fine. A warm bell packet. Okay. So you learn about this in your fifth chapter. We'll see all those things at that. Point. Okay. Yeah. Guys, could you understand? Yes. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to show, and uh, yeah, I'll I'll try to do some more activities in the next class. Okay. but maybe not related to the first chapter alone it will be related to physics or sometimes you know here and there we we'll use chemistry also okay yeah see you guys what is the time 11 can yeah yeah can wind up i'll see you guys tomorrow thank you sir yeah Thank mm -hmm. you.